Hello, it is yet another day on the camper van build and today we've got a guest star. This is Jacob, John's buddy, and he is one of our biggest fans, I think, of the channel and he's been wanting to be in a video for ages. So today he's going to help John with a bit of insulation. Is that right, boys? Yes. Yep. And I am going to have a look at getting this gas tank oh, installed underneath the van. So wish me luck. Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm Adrian, single father to 13 year old twins, John and Ella. Hi. Our journey began in Thailand where I used to work as an underwater cameraman and that's where I met their mom. Tragically, we lost her during the birth in Bangkok. I later moved back to the UK to be closer to family. Now, nine years later, I'm home educating the kids and planning exciting adventures. I've always known the transformative power of travel and I want my children to experience it while they're still young enough to want to go with their old dad. We converted my trusty work van into a cozy camper van to embark on incredible journeys. Our future plan is to upgrade to a bigger van and make a more permanent home in Europe. Join us on our journey as we explore the world, learn and grow together. Are you ready boys? Go masked up and ready to go? Yes. So you notice the boys have got masks on as well. This stuff is what we use in camper van. It is shredded plastic bottles, so it's great. So it doesn't get wet. It's waterproof, basically. You don't really need a mask, but I don't know if you can see there, because we're cutting it up, there are little bits that float around in the air. And in a small environment like that, it's better to mask up, I think. Anyway, John's teaching Jacob how to get this stuff in. Let's have a look. So we want to get the entire thing in. Once you get going with the scissors, it's actually okay, but mm -hmm. we have tried multiple ways of cutting stuff. If anyone has any suggestions, please, down in the comments, because it's driving us batty. The other thing that doesn't help is John is left-handed, so he keeps trying to use the scissors with his left hand, which forces the blades sort of oppose opposite to where they should be. <laughs> I know, I can do it with my left hand too. Get in there. He's, he's got a technique, haven't you, John, with your left hand? Mm -hmm. Then we also have loads of offcuts of Kingspan stuff Even left over from my work previously and such like. And the intention here is we started this yesterday evening to get a feel for it. As you can see, we've been putting the, the shredded bottle into these difficult to reach places and then putting big panels of uh, this Kingspan in. Now this stuff is the best insulation you could ever possibly use. And then we've got um, more of the shredded bottles down there up in there into all the tight hard to reach places we're even going to be shoving it into here poking it in with um whatever screwdrivers bits of wood anything that'll work i even want to try and get it all the way down this pillar so uh, it's a bit of a challenge but i'm sure the boys are up to it aren't you boys yes. yep Just really squish it in push it in uh, you can straighten it out once it gets in oh right okay yeah try Jacob might need a stool. <laughs> so these beautiful scissors that we've been trying to use are my, my best kitchen scissors. So we thought we've got a lot of this stuff to do. How about we go to Screwfix and we've got these ones to try, which are wallpaper scissors. And look at these big beasty shears. They're spring loaded as well. Yeah. Uh, they're probably good for your left hand, are they? Are they universal? You've got them upside oh, down, I think. Yeah, it's upside down. What? The big. <laughs> <laughs> now you just look dangerous. <laughs> That's it. Oh. Yeah, okay. Right, test them. Come on, I want to see if they work. Jacob is going to try the wallpaper scissors. Go for it, mate. What's, what's the verdict? They work uh, a bit. A bit, a tiny little bit. Not very well. Not that great. No. Well, they were only about six or seven pounds, but we'll keep them. They're a decent pair of scissors. John, are you going to step it up with these big bad boys? Let's see how they behave. I think these could be the ones. Oh, oh hello. <laughs> hello. Hello. Oh my God. Jesus. Yep. And they're spring loaded. Wow. These are the ones. And how much did these cost? Those were about 25 pounds. For a pair of scissors. Worth every penny, we'll keep those. Any good tools like that I'm keeping and taking with me, so. <laughs> Why is it not blowing? <laughs> 
Right, with those new shears, I think I can leave the boys to it and I'm going to take a look at the gas tank. Are you all right, John? Do you want to get the radio and get back to it? Yes. I've got to go under there now. Let's have a look at the space we've got to work with, shall we? Right, if you can see where we are underneath the van here, that is obviously the rear end. That is the spare. And I've been advised by the guys, uh, John at Autogas 2000, that that is where we're going with this massive tank. So what I've got to do is figure out where exactly the brackets are gonna go on the floor here. I'm gonna drill some holes straight up through, through our shiny new wooden floor. And then I've got to cut some holes in our nice shiny wooden floor to put some, uh, I've got some plates with bolts that they supplied. I'll show you all that now. So this is a box of goodies that they gave us from uh, Autogas 2000. Well, they didn't give us, sold them to us. There we go, Autogas 2000 Leisure Limited. And they, uh, that is an instruction book, even though I was talked through it all very in depth, which is fantastic. These are the big brackets that are gonna go up underneath the van and then that will hold the tank inside and these are the plates I'm going to have to put let me show you over here what I'll be doing is when my holes come up through the floor I am then going to have to cut out squares to send these down so I can multi-tool out a section of our pretty floor send those right through with the bolts and then I can fill it back in again, it will be fine. Right, before I can think about putting it underneath the van, there's a few things we're gonna to have to do. So uh, I've been slowly fiddling through the instructions here. Let me show you. So what we've got to do is I've unscrewed this. We take this face off here. Use that to stop it moving. Now, apparently what we're gonna do, this is obviously um, a pressure gauge to tell us how much is in there. And what we've got to do is remove this with these two screws. Now this is the first time I'm doing this because I've read the instructions but not attempted it before. Oh, it's as simple as that. Okay. How on earth is that figuring out the pressure? Interesting. I don't know how that works. But what we're going to do is, that's the one we've taken out and this is the one they provide us with because we don't want to have to take the front of this off and claw, crawl into the van every time we want to read this. This one enables us to connect it to a reader that will be in the van. Oh, I see, yep, there we go. Now they did provide this as well, which is obviously a reader I can put, can you see that? I can put this uh, somewhere up on the wall in the van where I'm gonna keep most of my dials and gauges and whatnot. So then, we screw this back in. There's a few things to learn before I can go under the van now I'm thinking about it. So I've got my cozy chair out and I've got my instructions and a cup of tea and I'm gonna sit and read the instructions. The boys have just had a little lunch break. They're now having a little fly of the drone. You see? You see? Oh. <laughs> Jacob's having a go with the drone, he's been wanting to play on that for ages, but see? as you can see they've been doing a great job in here, they're tucking it down into right, all in these like nooks and crannies like that up in there and then we can put a sheet of the Kingspan in there. Jacob's uh, been getting them down in these ones here. Oh. Right, the boys are back in action. Uh, Jacob's mum's on her way though, so we're going to see if we can get one of these done quickly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ta -da. Ta -da. Oh, you'd probably be alright with one in the middle for that one, John. It's been quite small. I would put it on the, the higher bit here because remember this one, look, it hardly got through. <coughs> oh, yeah. So I'd stick it there. So, Ta -da. these are clever, these Jacob. Do you know what we do? Locking it in like a mirror. Hang on, how do, I, how do I get it under here? Yeah, that's like that. And Watch your fingers. And then it pokes out like that. Perfect. There we go. There she is. And then we got one of these on her. Then we put one of those on. And then we're done. And then we snap it off with the little thingy. That's all right there. Mum's here. Well done. Yay. Right then Jacob has to go. So thank you very much for your help, buddy. Bye. You've been fantastic today. Bye. And uh, we'll see you another time.
time, no doubt, yeah? Okay, I've got this one back to help me because we're going to fit this underneath there. Well, as usual with everything, um, I thought this would be quite a quick job, you know, just four holes, four bolts, bolt it up. No, of course not. I've spent ages reading the instructions. I've now figured out the wires and what I need to do. So that's why I've uh, soldered those wires on. I want them to be a permanent fixed connection. And I thought I am not soldering underneath the van on my back. So I've done that now. Um, now what I need to figure out is obviously on the bottom of the van, it's all ridges and bumps. So we have to make sure that these brackets are either both on a high or both on a low. We can't have them wonky and off to one side. So there's that. <laughs> there's my axle beam about here, out here, I guess, battens underneath. We want to be roughly 45. That's way bigger. <laughs> Hmm, 60's far too much. So if I bring them just inside of that, that's, that's possibly acceptable. Yeah, that's acceptable. I don't half like making things difficult for myself, eh? 38 centimetres in between them, but is that going to correspond to the bumps underneath? Oh my goodness. Let's find out. Oh, this is fun under here. I love being under the van. So what I've got to figure here, you can see all the bumps and ridges. And I was looking for 38, wasn't I? All right, that'll work. I should have brought a pencil. John, can you pass me a pen or a pencil or something? Sure. That puts us there and there. So that would be there and there. Ah, John. <laughs> I need a sharpie and one of them and one of them brackets, please. So that's going to be very difficult there and very difficult here. There. Is it easier to get in from that side? It is. Okay. Uh, we're going there. Okay. Ah, dust in my eyes. I have my marks. I'm actually going to drill holes in the bottom of the van after all the holes we filled in it at the very beginning. Okay. Hey, this thing's stolen my microphone. <laughs> oh. Right, that'll do. Cut! This is awful under here, but I am going to try and drill straight up, which is not the easiest of things in this position. Let's see what we get. Eyes full of stuff, no doubt. Is that a delivery? Because the timing's awful. <laughs> you might have to go and get it. Right. John's kindly filming me here. He might have to go and get a delivery if that's what it is. <laughs> All, right. All right, so we have got our four holes that have popped up. I've got to get one of those plates through each one. Now, I saw in the picture and the instructions that people were just using a hole saw. I wasn't going to. I was going to use a multi-tool and cut Really nice, neat square holes, but you know what? No. Well done. Right then, so what I need to do is just size those up to take uh, these bolts, which are M10s, so I shall get a 10 mil bit, size those holes up a little bit more. And what we will then do is quickly spray them and then we have to have a cooling off period while that dries and then we can put them in. It's time and I know it's going to be a bit faffy because we'd normally, you'd normally put the two brackets in and you'd be able to feed the tank into one and go beyond where it needs to be and then come back into the other if that makes any sense at all. But because we've had to put the brackets quite close together so we didn't hit the uh, sort of joists in the floor, that's not gonna be possible. So I'm gonna fit first bracket, and then I think we might need the, car, the van jack to jack the tank into place with the second one on and fit it from there. That's the plan in my head at the moment. And because it wants to be 40 to 45 uh, Newton meters, we get the chance to use our new, uh, what's it? Torsion rack, uh, ratchet. 
thing, that one that John's got. And he's going to do that up there on the top while I go underneath. Are we ready? Mm -hmm. Let's go. That's it. Right, let's do the other one a bit. That's the way. Uh, yeah. That. that was it. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Well, this is fun. <laughs> That's a really flattering uh, angle there, isn't it? So what we're doing is hiking this thing up on the spare bits of insulation, as you can see. So we lift one side, put a bit under, then the other side, put a bit under. And it's almost up to the height now, to be, to be honest. The problem is I've got to get the rubber around. Let me show you. Oh, you put this rubber around on the inside. Where are you? On the inside of there to protect the tank. So I've got to try and get that around on the other side. Hmm. Well, hello. Sorry about that. We just cut off, didn't we? That was actually days ago, believe it or not. <laughs> that tank was one of the most painful processes of this entire van build so far, if I'm honest. And it got to the stage there where the camera just got turned off and I just had to get it on before the end of the day. So I'm sorry. As I've said in previous videos uh, about trying to get as much content and YouTube videos out for you guys as I can, at the same time as trying to get the van done as quick as I can, because I don't want to keep paying rent on this house, I want to move into the van, that won out at that point there. I was just said to John, turn the camera off, get in this tank on, I can't do any more, just get it on. So that's what we did, I'm afraid. But you can have a little look now, so I'll show you. So, as you can see, it's looking fantastic now, and uh, Autogas 2000, they're gonna spray it for us, which is very kind of them. I just need to give them some notice, and we'll take it down there, and they'll spray it to protect it. So yeah, we've got a box of goodies here, and I'm gonna get this project finished off. So. I have got a flexi hose here, which will go to this regulator, which I will attach somewhere under the van, wherever it looks like it's the best spot for uh, where my gas will be coming up through the floor. I have also got this, which is our fill point, which I'm going to attach on that side of the van with this hose. And then we've got a bunch of clips and stuff to clip it away under there and tidy it up. So uh, yeah, should we get that done? And then this job's finished, properly finished. Here I am again, underneath the van, just where I don't want to be. It's my least favorite place. And I've taken the spare tire out, wheel, which might have been a sensible thing to do before, but look here. Now I've got really good access to everything I need to get access to there. And, uh, yeah, let's see if I can't clip you on somewhere and connect a hose or two. Ugh. Well, this is cozy. So, part one. Ugh. Take this off. Oy. So, this is my inlet hose, oh, which is annoyingly close to there. Oof, it'll be okay. Right, so I have got this little inlet now, which I need to attach on to the side of the van there. I can't find a better place for it. There's nowhere else this hose will reach. And this is a place where it's gonna get a lot of stuff kicked up at it from the, the road, but I don't have much choice really. It's going to be something like put it right up at the back, but then I worry about it hitting curbs and things. Well, quite limited because of the length of the hose, so it has to go where the hose will reach to. It won't go in front of the rear wheel, so it has to be behind it somewhere, and I just can't find a better place to put it, because it needs to be accessible. <coughs> I'm gonna drill it and fit it and see what the guys say at Autogas 2000. I knew one of these drill bits was blunt. Why didn't I bring a few more with me? Hey, 
it. <laughs> what you doing? Okay, so while that paint's drying, I'm gonna look at the regulator on the other side. So I'm gonna turn the camera around, I think, somehow. <laughs> Bye. So, same story on this side. Can you see me? I've just got to figure out where I want this regulator, but of course it's got to connect up to here. Right, we won't tighten that up too much because we want it to uh, move freely. Need to be able to twist the hose around. So, I've got to decide where I want this thing. So I suppose my options are up there, inside that wheel arch, or in front of there. None of this is easy. Okay, I think I've got a plan. I will be so happy when I don't have to come into this van anymore. Still got a wastewater tank to do. Hello. Hello, we've just got this parcel for you. Oh, fantastic. Just chuck it around the back of the van. There's fine, thanks. Oh. Anywhere there's good. Right, I've made a decision. I'm going to face it towards the front. And then what I can do is I'll run a, the first pipe off it will go up and underneath the kitchen. And from there I can have um the taps what do they call it they call it a manifold or redirect it and i can direct it off to all the places i need it to go that makes sense to me okay so i've got some self-tapping screws here yeah. oh, maybe we can get this thing in so once again I'm making holes in my beautiful floor that I spent weeks filling holes in. <laughs> right, I've just got a couple of clips to put on that, but that'll do for you guys, I think. So I'm going to turn this camera off because it's running out of power. Okay, this paint has dried, so I am now going to fit this on here. Right, then ideally, I get a bit of uh, nut lock, thread locker on here. It's a bit tricky to get it on the bolt behind, but if I can get it on the nut, every little helps. We don't want this thing flying off when we're bombing down the road, do we? And then that pings on like that. I can't imagine that's gonna stay on forever. <laughs> you know, we're gonna get, camped up somewhere one day and I'm gonna go, oh, where did that go? Right, I've just gotta get those um, hoses tweaked up to the main tank, clip them away under the body. I'm not gonna show you that because it's just more screws going in underneath the body and it's a faff with the camera, so I do apologize. Then I'm gonna just quickly show you what me and John have been up to in the last couple of days. There we go, so that is the back of the infill, nicely clipped on, up over there, nice and secure, going to the main tank over there. And then there, if you can see where we are, we're from the, front of the van now well midsection looking back that's my regulator making its way back to the main tank over there okay as promised i will show you a little bit what me and him have been up to look he's back he's been away at his gaming thing this morning oh look i've got fluff on the lens there we go so john's back and he can show us look what you've been doing this week mister insulation Yes, look at this. We've got beautiful insulation all around this panel. He's got it all inside here. We've managed to get it all up inside there. Fantastic. So he's going to move on to that next panel. But not today. You're going to hang out with your mate today, aren't you? Yep. And I've been doing some more wiring. I've been getting in um, wires for like the Truma for the boiler. Uh, that's sorry, you know, for the display, you know, the controller and the gauges for the gas tank. I've got a sender here, which will tell me how much gas is in the gas tank. And I've got more to add yet to do for the water tanks. Anyway, 
I think that is enough for this video. We got that gas tank on. I am knackered. That was the hardest job I've ever had to do. And I couldn't have done it without this man because he supported me. That day when I was under there, off camera, when the camera got switched off, I was stressing, I was losing it, and he came to my rescue. And he was, you were on it, weren't you? He was brilliant. He just got on the job and he was pointing and helping and coming up with ideas how we could support the tank. And it was brilliant. Anyway, the job is done. I feel better. So all that remains to say is thank you so much for watching and we're going to see you next week. If you haven't liked and subscribed, please do that. Jump on the Patreon. Oh, and also very quickly, a massive thank you to all the coffee givers. I'm so, Something happened on my app and I don't get notifications anymore. I just thought nothing was happening. I've looked on the app and there's loads of people been sending me coffees. Thank you so much. It's such a great help. You have no idea what it means to us. Anyway, thank you very much. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.